Lucha had been the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for this night. And we thank him for his presence. He's a faithful God. And he is here tonight. We shall rejoice in this night. And we shall be glad. For this is the night that the Lord has made. We shall go to the word of God. In the book of Romans, chapter 8. We start from verse 35 until the end. I'm reading from the NIV. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or, or nakedness or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. This is your word, Father. The sword of the spirit. It is alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. Speak, O God, and separate the bone and the marrow. In the name of Jesus, let your word search our thoughts. In the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. We are speaking tonight under the topic that says you are a winner. You are a winner. The Bible, where we read, there is a part that I love when I went through the word of God. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It does not say, who shall separate Christ from loving us? But who shall separate us from the love of Christ. All these things that have been mentioned in the word of God, they have the potential to separate us from the love of Christ. Not to separate Christ from loving us. He always loves us. But these things that have been counted here, nakedness, hunger, you can name them. These things are capable of separating us from the love of Christ. They, they are capable of moving us away from Christ. But they do not cause or they don't keep Christ from loving us. If you are a child of God and you live a righteous life, you, your life is blameless. You do no wrong. But even if it can happen that you do something wrong, but you repent from that, and you never go back to it, just like King David, this matter needs you to repent wholeheartedly. When you repent, and you never go back to it, know this tonight. You are an overcomer. You are a winner. Praise the Lord. All you need to do, once you realize that you have sinned against God, you need to repent. When you make the Psalm 51, 
It must not just be a poem for you. You must do it with a sincere heart. You repent and you don't do it again. But if you repent, I don't even want to call it repentance. Because when you repent, it is when you realize you're wrong. And then you, you, you ask for forgiveness from God. And you don't do that wrong again. Ever. That is repentance. Once you do that, know that you have overcome. You are a winner. Now, when you are a winner, it doesn't mean that you will not have challenges in life. You will have challenges. Challenges will come. But you need to know that when you, you cross, you come across that and you stand by the word of God, you become a winner. You need to know that no one can be called a winner if you have never come across challenges. We can't call you a winner. We can't call you an overcomer. If there is no challenge that you have gone through, you need to go through a challenge. Then we will know that you have overcome. If there is no challenge, you can't say you are an overcomer. You must first go through a challenge and you overcome. Many people that are in high positions, children of God, that are in high positions, they will tell you that it was not easy to get here because they've gone through challenges. And I am talking about children of God that have sincerely gone through challenges and they have received their upliftment. I am not talking about people that have money and have manipulated the situation in order for them to get to the top. I am talking about children of God that have gone through challenges and they have overcome and they held on to Jesus and they found themselves in those high positions. You are a winner. If there is something that is still bothering you, you need to know this. You must overcome it so that you are called a winner. You cannot be called a winner if one and the same sin keeps on making you fall down. If what, when that situation happens, it, be, it means you have become a slave to that which makes you fall every time. You need to repent and never do it again. Once you do that, then you have become a winner. I want to take you back to the children of Israel. When they were faced with challenges, especially when they were faced with the Philistines, this was one nation that was a big problem to the children of Israel. The Philistines. You may be faced with Philistines in your life, but I want to tell you something tonight. That there is help on its way. Because the word of God says, if you read the word of God in the book of First Samuel, chapter 17, children of Israel, they were always faced with this challenge until somebody came along. And that was David. When David came to the picture, he did not see what the children of Israel were seeing. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 4 to 7, and then I will jump to 26, it says a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, 
came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Verse 26. David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Praise the Lord. I had to read verses 4 to 7 because I needed you to get the picture of the kind of man that Goliath was and how he looked like and what he was wearing. Goliath was a giant. And the Bible, if you read that scripture, the whole chapter, the Bible says he would come out and speak and when he spoke just by speaking the children of Israel the army of Israel would be very much afraid to a point when David came to the camp and he heard this man speaking I believe the children of Israel when they saw Goliath they looked at the size and they looked at what he was wearing and in their thoughts they said we cannot defeat this man even when we were to attack him all of us at the same time we can never win this against this man that is what they were seeing they were looking at how big this man was you may be seated here tonight you are looking at the challenge you are faced with you look at how big the situation is but let me tell you something there is no challenge that you are going through that is bigger than God when David came to the camp he wanted to know looking at all these big men in the war when, when this man was talking Goliath they would all draw back and David was looking at them and looking at this Goliath he did not see what they were seeing it depends on what you are seeing at that moment. And let me tell you something. Whatever that you are seeing in your challenge, that is not what God is seeing. God is seeing his child becoming a winner over whatever situation that you see. It doesn't matter how big it may seem before your eyes. But before the eyes of God. It is nothing. David asked, what will be done for the man that will remove this shame? It's like I can see this young boy. It is, it is a boy against this giant. Because that is what the children of Israel saw. They saw a giant. And David did not see a giant. He just saw something. Something that is bringing disgrace to the children of God. And he said, who is this Philistine? Uncircumcised. That defies the armies of the living God. 
It's like I can imagine the anger that he felt inside of him. How, how do you dare touch the children of God like this? Who do you think you are? You are nothing before God. That is why David wanted to know what, what will be done for the man who removes this thing. Maybe you're asking the same question. You are asking yourself, who can come and remove this shame in my life? You need to understand one thing. You need to understand that the one that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. And when you speak a word, the Bible says, I will make your words to be like fire. When you speak a word, you speak the word of God upon that situation. The word that you have spoken, the word of God is God himself. And when you speak the word of God, what comes out of your word, it is this Hebrews 12 that we speak about. The God that consumes everything. But you need to understand your position first. So that when you speak the word of God, you know that once you have, you have won against the situation, then you shall be called an, an, an overcomer. David did not consider the size of the challenge. Do not consider the size of the challenge. The challenge that you are going through, the challenge that you see in your life, it is not big. It is not bigger than God. We were told at one point at this pulpit that the God that you serve is a very big God. He is a big, 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 big God. He is above what you see with your eyes. What you are seeing with your eyes, it is nothing before God. You need to understand that. Because what happens is when the challenge is before you, the devil then brings magnifying glasses. So that when you look at this challenge, it seems very big. And yet it's only magnifying glass that the devil has put before your eyes. You need to use the eyes of God so that you are able to see that this is nothing. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God is for me, who can be against me? And there is nothing on this earth that can separate me from the love of Christ. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what I'm faced with. But one thing that I need to understand is that greater is he that is in me than this challenge that I'm faced with. The devil wants to take your focus so that God does not call you a winner. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are a winner. You are an overcomer. That is what the word of God says. Christ Jesus has made us to be more than conquerors. That is why he went to that cross. That is why he went through all these challenges for you and me so that when we come across these challenges we must know that these challenges Christ Jesus has already already conquered for me. All I, all I need to do is just to walk over. You just need to walk over. 
The battle has been won for you. Jesus Christ has done it for you. That is why he died on that cross. He knew that we cannot do it. That is why he had to come to this earth in a form of a man so that whatever we go through, when we go to him and say, Father, this is what I'm going through. It is heavy for me. I can't take it anymore. That is why the Bible says he understands because he's been through it already. You are a winner. You just need to understand that you are a winner. As a child of God, you will come across challenges. And some of these challenges, they will look as if they are so far beyond your strength. You will feel they are far above you. And when a challenge is above a person, or when they think the challenge is above them, you will hear by the way they will speak. The first question that they will ask God will be why? Why? And if I were to hear you, or if I can hear God, when you say why, I believe he would say, why not? When you are asking him, why, Lord, why? He is saying, why not? Because I have given you power. I have given you authority. How will you know that I have given you this authority if you do not go through these challenges so that the power that I have given unto you, you will then begin to use it. Then you become an overcomer. If you are still asking why, Lord, you will not become a winner. You must go through and win. Then you are a winner. I said I'm here to give you a word of encouragement. And the word of encouragement is challenges will come. Be encouraged. Challenges will come. And you must allow them to come. Because there is a word of comfort in the word of God. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Oh my God. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out, Jesus, so that you can endure it. Praise the Lord. I don't know what happens when we are faced with challenges. But something does happen. And we forget these scriptures. And we begin to ask, why, Lord? The Bible says, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He even said, but when you are tempted and you feel that it's beyond what you can bear, he will also provide a way out. He will provide a way out. You just need to be able to see that way out. <laughs> because there is a way out. There is a way out. You may think there is no way out. But trust God and stand by faith. You will overcome. Trust God. The challenge with us 
is that we want to trust ourselves. Trust God. The word of God says in the book of Isaiah 59, verse 19, the second portion of verse 19, in the New King James Version, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Praise the Lord. There is one thing I know about Jesus. Is that when you feel that the enemy is now attacking you left, right, and center. The Bible says, when the enemy comes to you like that, the Spirit of God will lift up the standard so that you don't remain at the same level with the devil. Because remember, the devil must be under your feet. And that is exactly why you must keep him. So when he comes to you like a flood, God says, no, 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 no. Not my child. My child cannot be at the same level with rubbish because rubbish belongs to the dustbin. Then I will raise the standard because my child must be above. Don't allow yourself to be at the same level with the devil. That is not where you belong. That is not your place. That is why the devil eats dust. Because that is where he is. He is down there. Don't allow yourself to be at that level. That is not your level. When Jesus died on that cross, he wanted to make sure that you don't remain at that level. And he wanted to inform the devil that you cannot have my children. When I have died for them on this cross, they will always be above you. But you need to understand that. Deuteronomy 20, verse number 4. It says, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. For you to be here tonight, you don't even know how many traps the devil had for you. For you not to be here tonight. There were traps for you all over the place. From your very house. And you were wondering why your husband was fighting you. Telling you that you must not go to that service. I don't understand these services that go for the night. Or your children were fighting you. Or your wife was against you. The whole week, things were okay. But when today came, it was war. It was a trap. So that you don't come here. But because God walks with you to fight for you, he fought for you. It's just that you don't realize it. He fought for you. That's why you are here. Praise the Lord. I want to give you the secret of victory. Don't you want to know the secret of victory? How, how do we become victorious? I want to give you a secret tonight. And you shall become an overcomer. What you need to do is to go according to Romans 6. From verse 14 to 23. I will give you these scriptures. Romans 8, verse 1 to 13. Galatians 5, 16 to 26. If you walk 
as you are taught in these scriptures. I don't care what the devil brings. You will win. I don't care what he brings. You will overcome. You will overcome. I don't care what he brings. I see overcomers. I see overcomers in the house of the Lord. That which was defeating you, you are going to overcome it tonight. You will overcome it tonight. You are not a slave. You are not a slave to darkness. You are not a slave to that situation. When people greet you, you always say, ah, I, I have, they call them shalcons. I'm a shalcon. Shalcons. <laughs> These things are always there in my life. <laughs> I'm even used to them. <laughs> because they are always there. <laughs> so they lungulize it. I'm a shalcons. <laughs> and you think it's something very big. <laughs> Every child of God must know that you will go through challenges. And that is just it. You are going through. If it is a bridge that you need to cross for you to get to the other side, you, you cannot go any other way. But you must go through the bridge. It doesn't mean that you will not get to the other side. And it doesn't mean that you are going to park on that bridge and start to build a house on the bridge. You are going through. It's not where you are supposed to be. You are supposed to be on the other side. But for you to get to the other side, you must go through this bridge. And you will get there. It depends on the kind of bridge you are going through. There are those bridges that are stiff and, and stable. And there are those bridges that when you step on it, you are not even sure whether you are going to make it to the other end. You see, if it is that kind of a bridge, it may take longer. But you will get there. Every step that you take, it may seem, will I get there? Because the bridge is not stable. Just hold on. Hold on. You will get there. You will get there. The bridges that we cross over are not the same. They are not the same. And the length is not the same. It depends on where you are going. It depends on your vision and where you are going. But that bridge, you must go through it. Don't be afraid of the bridge. If you look at bridges, they don't just build a bridge. They make sure that on the sides, it is safe for you to cross. <laughs> Jesus Christ, when you are about to cross that bridge, he makes sure that he places angels so that when you cross, no matter how disabled that bridge can be, no matter how that bridge looks like, but rest assured, there is protection for you. You are not alone. The Bible says he will command his angels concerning you. Concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Ah, you have bodyguards. You see the people of this world, they have big men next to them. 
Others walk in front of them. Others next to them. Others, they are behind them. They wear black suits and, and dark sunglasses. Even when it's in the evening. Because you must see that I'm a bodyguard. The bodyguards that we have, there is no naked eye that can see them. But let the devil touch you. That is when the devil will know that hey, this one has bodyguards. We can't even touch her. Oh. You are a winner. You are a winner. Have you seen people win something? They are beyond themselves. They are just beyond themselves. The last scripture for you. Luke 22. Luke 22. Verse 31 to 32. This scripture is meant for the winners. If you are a winner, this scripture is for you. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Hey. I've prayed for you, Simon. That your faith may not fail you. You know your name, right? Remove that Simon and put your name. Because you are not Simon. You may be Jafta. Or Geraldine. Or Josephine. Or Josiah. Whatever your name is. Remove Simon, Simon. And put... Sarah, Sarah. Satan has asked for you to sift all of you. But I have prayed for you. Susan. Susan, I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. These scriptures that I gave you for you to become a victor. The devil has asked for you. He asked for job. And Jesus says to Simon Peter, Jesus is saying to you tonight, Satan has asked for you. His will worship center. Satan has asked for you to sift all of you. But Jesus has prayed for us that our faith, hey, Osiam, our faith will not fail. What is it that you believe in? The faith that you have in God. This prayer that Jesus Christ made. He did not say I have prayed. That Luke 10, 19 should work for you. If you have faith in Luke 10, 19. That when I say this authority that I've been given. Devil, I am trembling on you now because I have this authority. And by the fire of Hebrews 12, 29, if you have faith, the prayer of Jesus Christ is that that faith that you have should not fail. Not how many demons you have you have cast out. But the faith that you have. When, when, when you sift something, back in the rural areas, after harvest, they will take the maize that, is, that, is, that has been taken out of the cob and they put it on a container, a flat container. Because what they need is the seed. Only. Not the chaff. 
So what they will do, I love the way they do it. They will hold it up and they pour the maize down so that the wind will blow all the chaff. The devil wants to do that. If you are chaff, you'll be blown by every wind. Every wind will blow you. But if you know that you are a seed that Jesus Christ wants to use, when the devil wants to sift you, you will make sure that you stand. I have prayed that your faith will not fail you because you are a winner. You can't win if you don't have faith. We are going to pray. We are going to make a prayer of a winner. If the devil had defeated you somewhere, you take back your armor and you rise up again. You remind the devil that, listen here, yes, stupid devil, I am the winner here. You are supposed to be under my feet. This challenge that you have brought to my life, if you think it will take me from the love of God, you have another thing coming because there is nothing, and I mean nothing, that will separate me from the love of Christ. There is nothing that will separate me. Remind the devil that there is nothing that will separate me from the love of Christ.